everyone. We are going back from my parents back home. Um, see how it does on this stop sign here. It's still stopping too far back. It's creeping forward for visibility. And it needs to stop right here. So, in terms of our um, test, I'm not going to actually count that one just because our test stops starts at the bottom of the mountain. But in terms of a disengagement, it definitely was because I'm trying to get them to stop at the correct spot in the stop sign. Only one or two updates have ever done that correctly. And uh, that needs to happen. It stops too far back and it flies through the stop sign. Which, I mean, to be fair, humans do that too. It's not that big of a deal. But it is kind of kind of alarming because as a human I can't see through the bush and it just starts flying through the stop sign like as if it didn't check the blind spot um, and it has done that once when a car was coming and clearly didn't see the car coming so stuff like that needs to be improved now upon right what we are actually going to do here is stop at all these on the way back home um, we'll get a little bit of bonus footage and there's a good example can't see it. This truck. Um, fortunately, you couldn't see the side. But um, let's go ahead and record that. Um, now, it could have gone. The only way it would have been acceptable to go is if it floored it. And that's not comfortable for the passenger. Um, so it should have looked and saw the car coming and decided not to go. So that disengagement definitely will count towards the. Uh, disengagements on this route okay so we got some phantom braking for some harsh shadows there and I'm braked again right here still doing it these harsh shadows this time of the year with the trees really cause a lot of phantom braking I'm afraid what's going to happen is when the leaves to get back on the trees, phantom braking is going to go away. And then they're like, hey, phantom braking is solved, but it's not really solved. Um, and then it's going to be a fall again, the leaves are going to fall off, and then phantom braking is going to be worse than ever. Uh, just because it, it was never resolved before uh, leaves came back on the trees. It sucks because I have to keep my foot above the pedal. Um, it's kind of no longer a car behind me they turned off but with a car behind me you have to keep your foot on the pedal and like right like right now it's doing a lot of regen like full regen um right there just because of phantom braking and if there's a car behind me it looks like i'm brake checking them We have a stop sign coming up here. Notorious for trying to stop at it. It is on a side street. And it should just go straight through it. And it tried to and it finally went through it. Uh, it saw it and thought it was needed to stop. So that's good. That's an improvement. Now the problem is there's been updates. Where it would, it would cross that one update. It would do it right. And then another update it would do it wrong. So... <laughs> sure what it's doing. I think it's because it sees these. Oh, it stops at yield signs. That's a problem now. No. It's turning the blinker on incorrectly. Every time it tries to turn the blinker on, this is not a separate road. This is the same road. It just it continues on. I guess the road name changes, but it's not like you're turning on to a road. And this is pretty common here in the mountains still. Not as bad as when I first got beta, it has improved, but it's still pretty bad the way like regularly there'll be sharp bends in the road and I'll turn the blinker on. And that happens almost every time at this particular section here. Like right there, just randomly turn the right blinker on even though we have a left turn coming up. Okay, <laughs> turn the blink around and turn it off. Turn That's confusing it. the people behind me. It's like, well, is he actually going to stay in this lane or not? 
So the speed limit went back up to 35 when it's really a 20 right here. And it's still using poor map data. Of course, it's the same map data as, as always. And it still doesn't read that sign. It's really odd that it seems to be given much more distance between cars now at uh, stoplights. At least this is the second or third time this has happened. And then it doesn't speed up appropriately. While the speed limit still is 20 in this section, as a human, you're gonna start speeding up. It's 45 right here. And you're gonna start speeding up to the speed limit. Navigate to all these. Navigate to all these. That was a disengager. I don't know what the hell it was doing right there. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't trying to look at the screen because it's a connection error. This is the problem with voice commands. They were like, oh, use voice commands for everything. I'm like, sorry, you have to use the screen because half the time the voice commands don't work correctly. I'm pretty sure right here is what I'm trying to get. And then this person behind me is trying to pass me because I look like I'm a drunk driver over here. Okay, well, uh, we're gonna count that as a disengagement just because the car is being so slow. This is part of full cell driving. If the car can't make decisions quick enough, that's not gonna count. Now turn left onto Duncan Hill Road. Okay, guess that's gonna work. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so that, that type of situation, like the voice command wasn't gonna work. And then it was like the screen wasn't loading up. Like I know how to get there, but like the car doesn't know how to get there. I'm like I, I shouldn't have to like as a human like I could be in a robo taxi. I'm like, hey, I need to stop past this grocery store. Take me here real quick, and then I'll be take five minutes and I'll be back out. Like. The car can't just like think about it for 30 seconds and blow past the road it needs to turn on. And just needs to go do it. Uh, it can't have that type of delay. And so that's, but I don't think, I think that's going to be a serious issue with this car because right now Tesla is not going to allow us to upgrade this, this media control unit. Uh, the, that I hope will change once the chip shortage is, um, is past us. If the chip shortage is gone and there's plentiful amount of computer chips and they still... That person got so close to me, my goodness. Uh, if the chip shortage is done for, like, tons of chips, um, and we still can't upgrade the computer in this car, that's going to be a big problem because it goes against their mission. Your destination will be on the left. It goes against Tesla mi Tesla's mission of... Uh, it's seldom into the transport of sustainable now, energy. Is on the left. Yeah, I didn't get it. But right here, we're not going to count that disengagement. But, um, yeah, so... By allowing my car to... Um, upgrade the computer allows it to last longer. Um, eventually... There's, you're going to run out of these computers that are eventually going to break and not work correctly. And so, it's only a matter of time. Like, I, I want to keep this car to the wheel. Like, it literally just stopped. It's not worth repairing anymore. I'm keeping it 20 plus years. So, it's going to happen. Um, yeah, so it's something we have to do. If, um, and we should really push for with Tesla to make sure we can upgrade these computers and this car will last as long as possible. I do intend to get a second Tesla before, like, and I'm just going to keep this for 20 years. But, um, yeah. Enough of my rant, but uh, that drive wasn't great um, so far. We have a little bit left of this drive, and I'll see you once we're back out. Okay, everyone. We are headed back home. Normally, we would have a person right here. Okay, that's not going to count. We're good to go. 
Okay, I'm not sure what was going on there. It doesn't turn wide enough at this turn. I've disengaged at least a couple dozen times and, the, and since I got the beta program at at this turn and only one or two times out of all of like the 20 plus times I've done this turn has it ever done it right. And it's so odd to me. Like It just launches out, pauses, and I'm like, oh, what should I do here? Let's turn. <laughs> so... I, I'm not sure what's so difficult about that turn. If I mean, if anyone wants to point out something I clearly can't see, I don't, I don't know what's so difficult about that turn, but it's it's not doing it well. Uh, I never has done it well, for that matter. And many times as I disengage, it doesn't correct it. Now turn left onto four seasons and it can insists on getting in this lane, unfortunately. Let's see if it'll correct this turn. Yeah, so that's better. Uh, last last update made it oh, go half in the other lane. You can tell it made a tiny bit of hesitancy for that car that passed in front of me right there. And otherwise, uh, very good. Um, again, I don't like being in this lane um, when we're trying to get onto the highway up here. It just, especially, uh, this isn't like super high traffic right now, but that being said, it's just, it's, it, it leaves a lot um, of room for error up ahead. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that, this truck right here ran over top of the median. So it's a right only turn lane to go into the mall to my right. And it ran over top of the median and cut, cut off into the car because they got in the wrong lane. Uh, my car, I tried that once. I'm surprised it's only done it like a couple times in the beta program. Um, humans regularly do that. That's not the first time I've seen someone do that. and Which means it happens all day long. Now here's going to be the sketchy part. Can I get over to get onto the highway? Maybe we're going to cut this truck off. Take the interstate 26 east. And seeing these two cars like in the way like this is the perfect spot to get over it got lucky again the, the truck turned it gets lucky like I, I just if that truck kept on going and it didn't get over it would have it just gave up and went past I, I would have took over and got cut in between but it's just it really shouldn't stay in the left lane because very often, I've done that myself, actually, when I first started the drive, um, I wasn't aware where I was going and didn't get in the correct lane ahead of time. And yeah, that's, that's when I first started driving, it was right before good smartphone navigation. So we, you didn't have smartphones and GPS. Like that wasn't a thing. I had a smartphone, it was like an old Windows mobile smartphone, but it didn't, it didn't have data on it. Um, it was, it was very early in the smartphone age. Like even the iPhones didn't have maps or of any kind at that point. And so it's not like I had any way of navigating. I didn't have a normal GPS TomTom Tom or anything. So I just had to know where I was going. So that type of stuff happened. The car has relatively excellent maps to navigate. It knows where to go based on that. I can follow these maps and know exactly what lane I need to be in. And so this car should be able to do the same thing. So the beginning half of this video, as you can see, not great. Uh, and that just has more to do with like the software glitches in the car and less to do with the full self-driving. 
but it's still very much applicable to a robo taxi. Uh, and if this car is opposed to it's going to be a robo taxi, I don't think it ever is. Um, Elon is really okay. We have to, we have to push it forward. There's a car behind me. Um, I, I, I think they have backtracked on that, and I don't think this particular car is going to be a true driverless robo taxi. Guaranteed legislation or something is going to be like we need more compute power, something I don't know. Um, and they're going to be like, yep, you're going to have to either pay, I don't know, so, the, something that I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. Put it on record. Um, I am certain this car will get level 3. Um, I'm pretty certain it's going to get that. But um, it is not going to not going to do uh, it's definitely not doing level 5. It might, level 4 is still up in the air. I'm um, definitely going to have a level 3 in this car. I do, level 4 is the, is the question mark, whether or not this can come pick me up wherever I am in its current state. I think they're going to need some type of hardware upgrade, whether it's computer, camera, something. Most likely it's just a computer. But we'll see. We'll see. Obviously, I'm not a, a AI engineer, so we'll see what happens. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below, everyone. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.